charts usually show values as visual properties, like the length of a bar in a bar chart, the location of a dot in a scatter plot, the size of a bubble in a bubble chart, and so on. Unit charts, on the other hand, use multiples instead to show a value. You may have seen this in information graphics. There's also a very famous type of unit chart that's called isotype that you may have heard of. They're an interesting family of charts that seem to have some rather unusual properties. Let's take a look. Perhaps the most famous type of unit chart is called isotype. It was developed by Alt Neurath together with his wife Marie Neurath and the designer Gerrit Arndt, who developed many of these symbols that are still used today because they're very succinct, very effective modern style uh, symbols. Isotype was used for exhibits uh, and then later for books to tell people about the world using data and numbers. And many of these isotype charts were actually done in a way that could be re read in two different ways. You could read them as bar charts because the symbols were all the same size and you could just like look at them as the, the length or the, the height of a bar. Or you could look at the, the symbols and count them and multiply them by whatever number they were representing. Maybe they were representing 5,000 people or 5 million heads of cattle or something like that. And you could then that way get that, that number very precisely if you wanted to. Throughout the 40s and 50s and 60s, these isotype charts were used quite a bit in books where numbers and, and charts were used to reinforce the ideas and the message of, of the text that was in the book. Here's an example. This is a book called There is Work for All. This was published in 1945, and it contains a number of charts, some of which are typical kind of uh, isotype charts, and some of them are a bit more unusual. This one in particular here is what I would call a typical chart. and <laughs> This is a uh, chart of how many ships were built, over time. So the, the vertical axis here is time and the horizontal axis works like a bar chart. So you can read this as bars or you can read it by counting the number of symbols and then multiplying. A different kind of chart that is still a unit chart and is in this case again a, an isotype chart but it's different is this chart here showing the distribution of wealth. And this is a very timely chart. It shows the, num the, the people here, so each, each person, each, each, each guy here is 1% uh, of the population. And each red circle is 1% of the, of the wealth that, that exists. And you can see how unevenly this is distribu distributed. And this is a chart that perhaps would be familiar even today uh, as well. The symbols used in isotype charts and other kinds of unit charts may be why some people consider them childish. But I've actually done some research together with uh, Steve Franconeri and Steve Harros, and we showed that the isotype charts are actually very good for some purposes, in particular when it comes to memory. So it's much easier for people to remember what they saw in isotype charts than in plain bar charts or really any of the other kinds of charts we tried that were all labeled either with images or with text. We also found that people were no worse in reading isotype charts than they were with bar charts. And now we had expected that to be the case though, so memorability was one thing, but we were expecting people to have more trouble reading these charts because there is more going on. These symbols are more complex. But it turns out people are really good at that, especially, or I would say in particular, <laughs> when the numbers are small. And that is usually a design goal, is to keep the number of objects small in these, in these stacks or in these rows of, of objects when you draw these kinds of charts because there's an effect that's called subitizing. And subitizing makes it possible for us to quickly guess the number of objects when there's a small number of them. And so that, that perhaps made it faster and easier for people to, to read those charts as well. Memorability aside, and also read, readability, I guess, aside, I think what, what unit charts and isotype are really good at is showing you that the data is about individuals. I think that's also why they're so common and so popular in news graphics and information graphics, when you're trying to talk about people and, and issues around people. 
And so I have a few examples here from news graphics that I particularly like and that show how these charts can be used very effectively, I think. My first example here is from the New York Times from 2014, a piece by Hannah Fairfield about the tenure pipeline at Harvard Business School. The question there was, given the time, uh, there were only a relatively small number of female professors there. And Harvard Business School apparently was saying that, oh, this is fine, we're going to just hire more people and we'll just even it out over time. And what Hannah did here was look at uh, the not just the number of people that were there. So what you see here is the, the number of, of male professors and, and the female professors there in orange. And she then starts to break that down. So the first step is here, she shows us the male professors. And then we look at the female professors. And these are both the tenure professors. And you can see how many there are and how long they've been there. But then we look at the tenure pipeline, and these are now the untenured professors. First, the men, and you can see how many there are coming in. And then we look at the women, and we see how many of those are coming in. And it's pretty clear that it's not that many, and it certainly is basically the same ratio as the, as the tenured professors. So it's not actually going to change all that much uh, over time. But the point here is that this is showing each circle here is one person. And so we can see the data very easily and we can understand what this data is about. And it's much more interesting and much more effective as a story than if this were just bar charts or bars and you compare like the bars for men and women and just look at those next to each other. My next example is also by Henry Fairfield and also the New York Times. And this piece is even older, it's from 2013, but the idea is really good and it's, it's still valid today. And the data hasn't changed all that much probably since then. This is about the diseases and the problems that people have who live in, in uh, elder care facilities. And the, the way this works here is that it's a unit chart, but it's a different kind of unit chart because it's also a Venn diagram. <laughs> so the way this works is that each little icon, each little person here represents 600 people. And the, the way the story works is that it walks you through the, the idea of people having different kinds of diseases and then uh, what the combinations are. So the first one here is Alzheimer's. So you can see how many people have Alzheimer's, how many don't. And the next one is looking at high blood pressure and you can see how many people have that. And then the steps that aren't actually working anymore are the combinations of those. So that's, which is too bad because it's then combining those and making these nice little Venn diagrams. But I'm just gonna jump ahead because the last part is where you explore yourself. And that still works. So I can pick different kinds of diseases here to look at and compare. So for example, maybe I'll look at depression and arthritis and see how many people have each of that, uh, these two uh, problems and how many have both of them. Or I could look at something else. You can pick your favorite diseases here, heart disease and diabetes perhaps and other things like that. So you can, you can get a sense of this data, both in terms of it being sort of a Venn diagram and you can see the numbers there as well, and in terms of individuals, because you can, you could, in theory at least, you could count the numbers and see what, what those are like um, and multiply it by, by 600. But empathy and data journalism aside, there are some interesting other uses as well that I think are perhaps even more interesting. There's a paper from 2001 that looked at representing the same data about clinical studies, about clinical trials, using different kinds of visual representations, using text tables or bar charts or pie charts or, um, or unit charts, and asking whether that trial should be aborted or not, which is a very important clinical decision that people have to make. And it turned out that people did the best when they were shown the unit chart better than any of the other kinds of representations. Now, there were some issues with this study because of the study design and, and it's also a very limited, small study. But it's still interesting that perhaps by showing people as individuals, as individual objects, basically, as individual things that you can see and count, you can relate to them much better than if they're just more abstract kind of representations that are continuous, like the bars or perhaps even the pies. Another example is a paper by Matt Kay and his collaborators and students where they were looking at the, the way people can think about distributions of probabilities. In this case, they used the idea of or the task 
of catching a bus as their as their example. And they had essentially two different kinds of representations. One is a continuous probability distribution, which is the kind of thing you would find in a statistics paper or in a textbook. And the other one is what they call a dot plot, and I would call this a unit chart, that uh, shows that same information, but broken down or, or quantized into some number of dots, 20 or 50 or maybe 100 of those, and then just basically retracing that same shape, but using individual distinct objects. And again, it turned out that people were doing much better when, we're pre when presented with the uh, unit chart. So to me, this means that we are better at dealing with units, at dealing with, even if they're multiples, if we're dealing with things that we can look at, that we can count, that we can stack up against each other, that tends to be easier than using continuous areas that we need to compare that are much more abstract and also much more complicated, especially if you look at these, at these distributions because they all have different shapes and you have to kind of compare them and like add them up. And that's, that's relatively complicated. Unit charts are unusual. A lot of software can actually produce them or at least not produce them easily. It, this also has to do with the way they work because usually like in a bar chart or in, in uh, most other charts, the number of objects you draw is the same as the number of data points you have. Like you draw as many bars as you have things to talk about and then you change the size. But unit charts are different and that, that makes them a bit harder to draw and, and to just use. But perhaps, they're different and different enough to warrant a bit more study in the visualization community and in research. And they have some interesting properties like the fact that they are more relatable, the fact that they might be better for reasoning, certainly the fact that they are more memorable because we've tested that. And we know that they are readable at least as well as, uh, as bar charts are. So I think they're an interesting kind of chart and I, I think they, they need to be studied more and, and really used more and looked into more. Since you watched to this point, I hope you found this video interesting. If so, please give it a thumbs up and also please consider subscribing down below. Uh, the show notes down uh, below also have all the links to the papers I talked about and the news pieces I talk about, as well as a few other links. So please check those out. And as always, let me know if you have questions, if there are any topics you want me to discuss, I'm always happy to, to consider those. And with that, thank you for watching and until next time.